Hey guys, you want to pimp up your Mini to the max. The best thing that you can do for that is to upgrade the suspension. I've got a badass suspension I'm going to put on this bike today. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Hey guys, it's Brian. I am back in the garage again today, and today I have a really cool project to go over with you. So today we're going to install a front and rear suspension on my CRF70, and this is a long travel suspension and includes a disc brake upgrade, so there's a lot to it. And so with that, I want to kind of tell you a couple things just so that you're like forewarned what you're getting into. So a couple things. One, this kit was made for a CRF 50 and my bike is a CRF 70. Because of that, some of the parts don't really fit as well as they should, which you'll see in this video. But you may have to fabricate some of your own parts is basically the bottom line. Also, there is some precision work involved. So if you're not comfortable using like a dial caliper or cutting things at perfect 90 degree uh, square, things like that, this may not be the project for you and maybe you should let a professional handle it. It involves a lot of patience and detail and honestly, this is probably one of the harder jobs that I've ever videoed on this channel. Uh, one thing I also want to mention is that this suspension was supplied by our good friends over at T-Bolt USA, Vince Sr. and Jr. They're fantastic people. They have been great to work with on this project. If you have a pit bike, especially like a Honda or a KLX, they have everything that you need for your bike. Suspension like you're going to see today. You saw our motor rebuild. They have everything that you need. They're a leader in this industry, and I strongly recommend that you consider them if you're going to upgrade your pit bike like we've done today. So one other thing I want to mention, and I'll try to be brief, is that I had uh, no instruction with this video. So because of that, I ended up putting some parts on and then realizing that I had to uh, take them back off and do them again later. So you may see some parts kind of disappear and reappear as the video goes on, but that's just because I ended up having to kind of figure these things out on my own. So one thing about the way they did it though is that I tried to assemble all the clips in an order that you can follow so you won't make any mistakes. And one thing I want to mention up front, and that is that I tried to install the suspension first without having the motor in and you just can't do that and you'll see why in a little bit. It basically, it blocks the access to the motor mount and you just can't do it that way. So the motor needs to be in. So that's really about all that I have. Uh, if you're ready to get into a little bit of a difficult job and you're ready for some funny looking clips that have a lot of mixed up, uh, you know, befores and afters and things like that, you probably actually will enjoy it because there's a lot of almost like blooper quality to it. So anyway, but if you're ready to uh, go to work, I am too. So let's pick up some wrenches and start turning them. So starting with the triple tree, you can salvage your steering head components off of your old bike or you can do what I did and buy some new ones from T-Bolt USA. So here you see the order of the components starting from the bottom. First is this washer, then the dust shield, and put a little bit of grease on there. Install the lower race and then liberally grease this bearing and install the bottom bearing. So the lower outer race is already installed inside the frame, but these are the top components. So here you see the order. So starting at the top of the steerer tube, the upper race, as I mentioned, is already installed. So next, put in the bearing, and then the inner race, and then finally this adjusting nut. This should be tightened to 29 Newton meters, but honestly, I did not have the right tool for that, so I just did it by hand. So next, install the top bridge and the supplied washer and then hand tighten this nut. So next, we're gonna install the fork tube. So slide these into place and then gently tighten the pinch bolt. You only need to tighten one. So after you install both fork tubes, you want to progressively torque the pinch bolts until they are all 20 Newton meters. Finally, torque this uh, stem nut to 74 Newton meters.
and then install the second duress nut. So next we're on to the uh, handlebar risers and these are pretty easy. Install the, each riser plate using the supplied bolts and then torque them to 20 Newton meters. Next, once the riser is installed, you can install the handlebars and same thing, put the top cap on and then progressively torque these until all of them are at 22 Newton meters. All right, with the steering system complete, now we're gonna go on to the front wheel. Here are the components. So bolts and spacers for the front caliper, the axle, and notice the knurled shoulder there, axle nut, and this cut to fit spacer that you're gonna be seeing a lot of in this video. So, and then of course the uh, sealed brake system. So my first attempt at installing the axle, I found that the knurled portion of this shoulder was so pronounced that the axle would not get inserted. So, so the outside diameter of the shoulders is too big. Using some uh, 220 grit sandpaper, I ended up kind of knocking the, the edge off of that and uh, reducing the outside diameter. So what we're after next is we are trying to align the caliper with the disc so that we can determine the width of the spacer that we need to make. So start by installing just loosely the front caliper. And so the goal is to press this axle shoulder against the bearing to a depth that allows the front wheel to spin freely like you see here with the caliper installed. So once that's achieved, then you want to determine the width of the front spacer. So using the caliper, first I measured the depth of the outer edge of the axle holder to the face of the wheel bearing, which measured 65.13 millimeters. So next, remove the front axle. And then what I did is measure the width of the axle holder, which in this case turned out to be 39.04 millimeters. Then subtract the first value from the second, and that will give you the width of the gap between the inner edge of the axle holder and the bearing face. So this is the width that we need to translate onto the pipe cutter. So uh, oil the pipe and then cut your spacer. Once you're done cutting, smooth and deburr the, and dress the face of the uh, spacer with a file. Just clean it up real nice and make it smooth. Now reinstall the axle with the spacer located as you see here. So now just slide the master cylinder onto the handlebar and you don't need to tighten this just yet. Reinstall the caliper, then torque it down to 30 Newton meters. Once that's done, check to make sure that the wheel spins freely. Then install and torque the axle nut to 59 Newton meters. Lastly, torque the axle holder pinch bolts on the other side to 20 Newton meters. And then tighten the front master cylinder. Finally, go ahead and give the wheel a check spin, make sure everything moves freely. And now we're onto the fork guards. So these consist of these plastic guards and there's three screws and related bushings. These two screws pass through the brake cable guide and fasten to these captured nuts on the back side of the left fork guard. So the brake caliper guide goes on like this and then the screws go through these two holes. To hold the captured nuts on the guards, I'm placing a piece of tape over them just to hold them in place while I do the installation. And install the bushings and the fasteners and then attach those to the front of the uh, axle holder. Now here we find a design flaw. So the side fork guard hole does not line up with the intending mounting hole, kind of annoying. So same procedure on the right side and as for this ill-fitting fastener, I'm just gonna have to figure out something later, but you can see it's not gonna fit. All right, so on to the rear brake and the components related to that. So there's a pedal and then this return spring, which is installed with the short end under the pedal like this. Then on the inside pivot goes this like narrow spacer and the outside there's a larger one or a wider one. 
So then that's followed by an OEM washer. This is the one that's on your bike and a cotter key that was not supplied with the kit. Installing the rear brake pedal requires drilling a locating hole for the return spring. So install the spacer and locate the point where you need to drill. And by the way, this is much more easily done if the swing arm is not installed, but I didn't realize that until it was too late. So I had to remove the uh, top shock pivot and get the swing arm out of the way. Using this center punch, locate where you're gonna drill your pilot hole. So start with a really small bit to drill the pilot and then try not to do this. Whoa! Then slowly increase the bit diameter until you get one large enough so that the spring end will pass through this hole. Once the hole is drilled, install the pedal components in the order we just went over. And then on a CRF70, it seems that this outer spacer is a little bit too narrow. So I'm gonna have to uh, make something there, I'm not sure what. So now onto the components for the rear brake and a little on the swing arm. So this is the brake cable guide and the related fastener. These two are for the caliper. And this mount is for the master cylinder. These two nuts are supplied to fasten the master cylinder, but these are not safe and should be discarded. Only a compression nut or a nylock should be used for braking ap applications only period. Do not use this nut. These two bolts and maybe these spacers are used to hold this plate to the clutch cover. Now this is the chain guide and I believe these two fasteners are used to hold this to the swing arm. Um, anyway, we'll see. So there's no supplied fastener for the master cylinder hind that you see here. So you're going to have to supply your own materials for this, your own fastener. So again, only use a compression nut or a nylock when installing this. So the fasteners pass through this heim and then into this pivot hole on the pedal. I'm not sure which side yet. And these two plates are the rear axle adjusters and these bushings, honestly, I'm not sure what they do. Lastly, I have no idea what these little screws are for. So anyway, whatever. So unfortunately on my CRF 70, uh, this plate was designed for a CRF 50, so it just didn't fit. So the plunger, like the heim here is hitting the swing arm and the master cylinder is hitting the strut that uh, goes up to the seat. So it's just not gonna fit. So I'm gonna have to make something here. Okay, so I thought this might be a little bit easier to show you off the motorcycle since these parts don't really fit that well. So let me show you how this bracket installs on the uh, clutch cover on the right side of the motor. So this bracket is intended to hold the master cylinder using these fasteners and they basically replace the existing fasteners on the that on the clutch cover on the right hand side. So there's two fasteners for that that replace the existing fasteners. So next is the master cylinder, which I don't have. It's still on the motorcycle, but that goes into these holes here. And it's possible that these spacers are part of that as well. Now I mentioned to you a little bit earlier that the fasteners that are supplied are not adequate. This is a nylock. And this is the type of fastener that you need for this job. A nylock or you could also use what's called a compression nut. And basically what this is is a slightly oblong nut. And this is commonly used in race cars and aircraft. But a non a non nylock or non compression nut is not safe on a brake. So uh, the next thing that's going to happen is that this heim joint, I'm just going to use this as an example. This is pretend like it goes on the uh, bottom of the master cylinder. Somehow or another, that's going to fasten through here and you're going to need some kind of washers or something on either side of that heim. So I'm not sure if it ends up like this, which it probably does, or like this, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be like this. So there's, there's no fastener supplied for that. So there'll be, well, let me just do it right. So there's no fastener supplied for that. So you're going to have a washer of some sort and then the fastener is going to go through and then you're going to have on the opposite side a washer and the compression nut or the nylon. So that's basically the installation for this. So uh, that's pretty much all I have. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and go on to the swing arm. All right, so now the swing arm. So the swing arm pivot components consist of this pivot bolt and related compression nut and these two washers and these metal spacers butt up against the pivot bearings.
On the axle end are these adjuster plates that you saw earlier. So coat the swing arm bolt with something like any seize and add the washer, then locate the swing arm into place. You kind of have to, you know, do it to the side here like this. And line up the mounting hole, install the pivot bolt from the right side. Add the washer and nut. And then torque the whole thing down to 39 newton meters. So the shock fasteners consist of your original factory top pivot nut and bolt and then the supplied pair that uh, goes on the other end on the swing arm. So with these bushings, this gap will close when you tighten the pivot bolt, which presses these steel bushings into place. And it looks like I'm gonna have to uh, fill this gap with something. I'll make some spacers for this later. So kind of a sloppy fit there. So I'm gonna just go to the top pivot now. So install the bolt and the nut, and then torque these down to 34 Newton meters. I don't have any shim stock to fit in between here, so for now I just use some assorted width washers. Then finally torque the second fastener to 34 Newton meters also. All right, so now on to the rear wheel, and this is where it gets a little tricky. So start by sliding the brake caliper and bracket plate around this pin. And you'll remember this brake line guide from earlier, install it on the swing arm just like this. So now for the tricky part, which is calculating the axle spacer. So install the axle, and you don't need to use the adjuster plate like I did here, and then tighten some kind of nut on the other end. I just happen to have a, another one in my shop. Then pull the axle all the way to the back of the swing arm, and then place a suitable straight edge squarely against the sprocket. So what we're looking to do here is locate the wheel on the axle so the sprockets align and the rotor spins freely. So move the wheel left and right until the sprockets align, then center the pad on the rotor. That left this gap of 4.51 millimeters, so that's the width of the first spacer. So using our supplied bushing stock you saw earlier, cut the spacer just like we did on the front wheel. And then I had to get a little creative with the second spacer. This telescoping gauge was blocked from fitting inside the gap by the rotor, so I just index off the edge of the center pivot and then measure the depth with the caliper. So again, cut the spacer and then smooth both spacers and install them on a nicely greased axle. I used some, some anti-seize. So next we're gonna install the chain guide using the supplied two Allen bolts you saw earlier. Finally, to create the third spacer, I used the exact same technique that I did on the second one. Install that spacer. And then push the axle all the way through. Install the left side adjuster plate and the compression nut, and then check to make sure that everything spins freely. With the transmission in neutral, guide the chain over both the sprockets like you see here, and then through the chain guide. So the axle needs to be roughly located in the middle of the adjustment range, and then you can pull it kind of tight, and then overlap it like you see here. Remove the extra links, and then install the master link by pressing it through the back side, and then install in the cover plate. Finally, add the spring clip, and then orient it like you see here in the picture, and then snap it in place using pliers. Check the chain tension and then lock the axle adjuster bolts. Finally, torque the axle nut to 59 Newton meters and hang on just one second because I got a couple more things to go over. Hey guys, a couple things before we go. First of all, um, the chain installation, I did kind of an abbreviated version of that installation because I'm gonna do a video pretty soon that's gonna show all the different things you need to do to get your bike ready to go, including tuning and all kinds of things. So chain adjustment is gonna be coming up in an upcoming video. So I'll give a little bit more detail on that soon. Second thing is, is I just tried to come up with my own ideas about how to solve the problems of the installation, like how to measure spacers and things like that. But by all means, feel free to to do something else. If you have a better idea, feel free to share those ideas in the comments. I mean, this one I just tried to come up with the best ideas that I could, but for sure they're not the only way that this job could be done. So, hey, I just want to say thanks once again for watching. I have people commenting from all over the world. I had a guy from Sweden the other day, so it just warms my heart to have people, you know, being helped by these videos. So, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We got more videos coming up real soon. The CRF70 is not done. So, anyway, Enjoy yourself. Thanks so much for watching this video. Get out and turn some wrenches and have fun.